coming from a long way. Thanks very much, everyone. But it's been really nice to see the old department. And my God, hasn't it changed? Yeah. A lot of money at Kent. Mm. Yeah. Great. Nine thousand a year, Brian. Pardon? Nine thousand fifteen a year. Yeah, well, student fees. I think the government's developing a big black hole because Liverpool's spending the same amount. When I was head of department, there was no money for anything. Now it's coming out of your ears. <laughs> anyway, on to more important things. Early memories of Kent. Um, this is our program order. Uh, Tony's come from America, as you all know, and I visited Tony a long time ago uh, at Swarthmore. And uh, I went to school in Olmerston in the Lake District, and nearby is a little hamlet called Swarthmore, where James Fox, the founder of Quakerism, came from. And that's where Swarthmore College. I didn't think you knew at the time, Tony, or perhaps you did. At the time, I didn't know, but my wife knows all about these things. She can give you a lecture. It's a small world, isn't it? Uh, But Tony's on first, followed by Rosemary, who's come all the way from Switzerland. Uh, Rosemary is still as attractive as ever she was, <laughs> and uh, we look forward to it all. Uh, Dave has come up from America too, and Harry, uh, local lad, we have to include Harry because he's up the hill. He's recently been Lord Mayor, and uh, he's going to tell us all too about how country has changed over the years. So, uh, back to. Chemistry, how it was, hasn't it changed? Uh, I came here 67. I think Harry and John were here just before. You were down in Beverly Farm in the huts down there. Alan and I started about the same time, 67. Now, uh, it's a bit different these days, isn't it? Uh, It was really founded by Gray Martin. Gray Martin started off in Canterbury near the Westgate, that's where his offices were, and he designed this laboratory, and that was the first bit of it that went up, and then subsequently there was the L-shape built on the end, round the corner. Um, Ted Colvin was appointed, I think, just after Graham, and Bob Hudson. Inorganic was always a poor relation in chemistry. We could all, all only manage a reader, Bob Gillard. <laughs> But Bob came <coughs> and uh, quickly developed a big group. Uh, I'll show some photographs of this later, but um, <coughs> Bob was quite a character. More of that later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what else have I got to say? Not much. Chemistry was hard in those days because yeah. I think uh, we arrived, Alan, about two weeks after it had been officially opened uh, and it was just a building with nothing. I was getting used to this because I came here from the University of Sussex which was designed by Sir Basil Spence and Chapsgrove, who I worked for as a PhD student, he was the first occupant of the chemical laboratory and Spence had obviously never designed a laboratory before because guess what? On the floor of labs were parking tiles. <laughs> uh, it wasn't just when you dropped mercury down, they decided to expand one night and we came up like the Vesuvius. <laughs> so we had to get out around the relay floor. And then his other nice design was that uh, we had a black armor plated glass base for the fume cupboard. These were beautifully looking until you put a hot thing on top and it just cracked. <laughs> so they're like windscreen. So we had to get out for another three months. At the end of the first year, I had nothing except that laboratory in which I could work. So I came here and started again. Uh, we had very poor equipment in those days. Uh, Perkin Elmer, 60 megahertz NMR. Does anyone yes. remember that? Yes. <laughs> and we tried to do computer of average transits. We were just repetitively scanning and hoping to get C13 spectra. That was a long time ago, and how things have changed since. But uh, yeah, they were interesting days, and there was a really good group. I've got to thank, because many people have started this sort of get together, and Tony initiated it uh, with initially the idea of just a Gillard reunion. And then it quickly expanded, 
and people were writing to me just last week saying, can we come? And of course I said, come and join us. I haven't a clue who some of them were or aren't. They're here, I hope. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, a really nice reunion. Alan Crichton, the local man, he's been helpful in organising last night at the Beverly and uh, tonight at the restaurant, so that's local knowledge. And last night I thought was excellent. Tonight I'm hoping will be equally good. So thanks everyone for doing their bit. I'm just saying a few words, a few more words, and perhaps some of you will remember this photograph. Oh, uh, you all got it, I'm sure. Uh, I don't have anything to point with, but you know Bob Hill, Bob and I probably go back the longest, because he and I used to work at ICI Plastics Division, well in Garden City. Then he went to do his PhD with Colin Ebon at Sussex. Then I think you followed me to Kent to work with Bob Gillard. Yeah, did, yeah. So, uh, oh, thank you. I must have hero worshipped you. Well, yeah, you followed me around. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do I work it? Up near the top. No, it's in the front end. Do people yeah. know where these folks have gone to? So it's Mike Price at the back there. No, well, could, couldn't yeah. contact him. That would be me. There's Bob. Oh, I hear that. There's Tony. Yeah. Rosemary sitting on the front row looking glamorous, as I said. Oh, Martin, we tried to get him here. He's now in Ireland. But he worked for a long time in Erlangen, Germany. And then, uh, well, he was starting to lose his English. He used to get Christmas cards, but his English was getting worse. A bit like yours, Marty. Yours was getting worse, too. You really got so. the target ever so. since you left. <laughs> <laughs> Much better now. <laughs> so, uh, Martin's here. Um, Roger. Roger. I met last night. He used to play wing forward for the University of Rugby. And I used to play wing forward for the uh, country rugby club. And twice a year, we would have a home and away game. And we played in the same position as Peter Bounce about. Back it tells you Anyway, we worked in the same lab and everything was fine the next, the next week, wasn't it, probably? Uh, who else? Mark has come all the way from Newcastle and uh, Mark worked with Alan. Uh, Alan Spencer, we've lost. Where's Mark? Huh? Where's Mark? Mark. Back with Alan. What? Is that you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't. <laughs> Harry, that was your. Well, <laughs> well I thought his name. Nick. Nick. Nick, Nick what? Husband. Uh, Nick husband. husband. Right. Yeah, because Dave sent me this other photograph, which he'll show with a few names on it, and I tried to do my best to put the other one, but I remember Nick, but not his surname. Uh, Paul Pay, he went to Sterling, he was a visitor with Bob Gillard. What were we in with Paris? Malcolm. Yeah, Howard. Howard, what's happened to Howard? Does anyone know? Uh, he's, he's, I exchanged email with him today. I don't know what he's doing. But right. he's and Diane, but I don't know what's happened to her. Oh, she, mm, Rosemary. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. No, she's... Uh, she got married to, to, to uh, John, John Price. Price. John in the uh, Price. department. Right. Diane Price. And uh, uh, she lives uh, just outside Bath. Oh, yeah. Uh, she regrets not being able to come, but she's always been a parent. Well, I remember in the days when she was here, she was a very, very bad traveller. Right. So uh, she couldn't make it, so I just couldn't be able to you know, travel. <coughs> um, Hugh Vaughan, you probably remember, he's up yeah. in Scotland at Paisley. Yeah. He wanted to come, yeah. but he had some. Uh, Jill, his wife, has back on him. That's and right. She needed him to be around. Yeah. Uh, Pick Gidney, who uh, died. died. Yeah. Very young. Uh, Stuart Laurie, I haven't had any contact with him. Yes, yes. yes. We, we tracked him down, but not, was not able to contact him. Right. Still, I, that's Barbara O'Donnell. Mike Price. Under her eye, yeah. Mike Price. Yeah. We lost him as well. No, we, we, we tracked him down. He went from here to Leicester, yeah. uh, where he did structures with Dave Russell on optical active complexes. Mm -hmm. Then he went into teaching. Oh, right. And the school where he was, there's no record of him. Right. Um, at least on the World Wide Web. Okay. Uh, so he's retired somewhere. Oh, the Bowman disappeared too. Roger Maskell no. got a story about him. Yeah, well, I, I met him about um, about a year ago, but still about to the, on a farm in, in, in Norwich. All right. And he's a professional photographer and lives in Essex. Oh. 
you hear the story about the, the vicar and the, the priest. Yeah, the story. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, very young Alan there. I think that's all, isn't it? No, you missed my son. You missed my son. Behind, <laughs> behind Howard Shaw. Yeah. Behind Howard Shaw. Yeah. My son. Yeah. Yeah, and is. we're in touch with Captain W. E. Cruz. Yeah, that's a good guy. Oh, and then behind <laughs> Rosemary <laughs> is Sandra. Sandra Pacini. Il Dottor San Alessandro Pacini. Yeah. Paul Mitchell on the front. And Sandra yeah. became yeah. a yeah. professor yeah. at the yeah. uh, University of Milan. All right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Got a one of his papers. Well, the technicians, they might have forgotten. Yeah. What the names of the other technicians? The other two on the left. Do you remember? No, I don't remember. Anyone remember the names of the two girls on the left? Oh, I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. Is it for real? Yes. This is Bob. But you always had an eye for women, as you all know. And that's uh, Bob and Anne, with a twinkle in his eye, as usual. That was. That was. That was. You sent me that photograph. That's very nice. When did he die? That's John. He sent me that photograph. When did Bob die? Was it 2013? I went to his funeral. Uh, April. Yeah, so that photo was from late 2012, I believe. Right. Like the autumn of 2012, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. This is in the cafe of the National Museum of Welsh Life. Oh, yeah. uh, really? Yeah. 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 And Bob yeah. report yeah. as a part that regards alcohol was concerned. And mm -hmm. I took rather a vegetarian option. <laughs> and he announced in very loud tones the assembled multitudes. Dr. Jones will take the healthy option. <laughs> <laughs> this was concealed from <coughs> chips and pies or something. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, that was at my retirement in whenever it was, 2006. And that's Malcolm now with a beard, as most of you have been developing. And Bob. And that's. Uh, Brian Johnson from Cambridge, who I'm currently, well, I've just written and had accepted a paper in Dalton objecting to his criticism of our work of five and ten years ago. Damn straight. Yeah, Come what a nerve. Well, I won't be able to do it. Ligand polyhedral model it's all about, which I don't believe in, is a solution, and we've got good animal evidence. So when Dalton comes out, it's in commemorative issue to Ken Wade. There'll be good article on people took me three months, I think, to write, and <coughs> my wife complains, thinking, what the hell are you wasting your time doing all this for? But, uh, yeah, it's coming out soon. And I think that's... What does Brian say about it, then? Uh, well, we agree, we exchanged a lot of emails, and yeah. in fact, every day, he would come back on my solution, and I said, look, Brian, he's getting a big task, and I said, let the scientific community decide how he's right and wrong. But in the solid state, I think it works. That's where it was first introduced by him and Bob Benfield, who's now here. Uh, but in solution, it doesn't mean we've got good evidence because uh, rhodium, I've worked on a lot. Now, rhodium NMR is quite easily done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <coughs> really, decide. Scientific community to decide. So, that's as much as I want to say.